The moment one commits themselves, providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help you that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issue from the decision, raising to one's advantage all manner of unforeseen incidences, meetings, and material assistance that one could never have imagined would have occurred. That was an excerpt from Goethe, a 19th century German philosopher. It's uh, from a, a larger piece of poetry that has proven to be true in my life over and over and over again. Once I decide, hey, you know, I I'm going to do this and follow through in a committed way, all manner of magical things can occur. And I was trying to think of an appropriate example to use for this video. And I was thinking back first to my fireman days where, you know, where we as a group would just do some incredible things, you know, miraculous things, you know, people's lives were saved, you know, in ways that we could have never have predicted happened. But I thought what I would do is talk about a more recent event. In 2020, March of 20, it was about three years ago, I had to shut my yoga business down here in Bangkok because of the reason people had to shut yoga businesses down all over the world. And I considered what I needed to do next. The Secretary of State from the United States was advising US citizens to go back to the States. And had I done that, Bua Kao, the woman I now call my girlfriend, who worked for me, she was my partner in that yoga business, she and her family would have been in trouble, you see, because I hired Boer about almost seven years ago to be the Thai face of my business. She also enjoys the yoga. She's good at it. And part of the deal was she could live in this great big house that I rented. I rented it because I needed a big space for a yoga studio and, you know, just move your family in here. And that became part of her compensation package. I paid her also. But what happened are her three children, four, four children, she has three of her own children and a cousin that lives with us as well. And they grew up under my roof. They were like seven years old. The youngest was seven years old when they moved in here. They're 15 now. And, you know, I'm, I became, I was gonna say a father figure, but more like a grandfather figure to them. And, and I, I came to love them. So I had to make a decision, you know, do I go back to the States, which I'd have been happy to do. I didn't like my home country. But had I done that, my grown children in the States are doing very well. They didn't need me. Buakau and her family would have suffered greatly. So I decided it was the right thing to do to stay here and take care of this family. So I made a commitment to do that. And out of that decision came some pretty amazing things. A short while later, I learned that the uh, paternal grandmother of these children, in other words, Boo Cow's ex-husband's mother, who took care of them. He used to, you know, take care of them when Boo was working prior to when she worked for me. Uh, you know, she, she, the grandmother provided daycare, so the children were quite close with her. Well, she announced to the family that she had been putting about a thousand dollars in the, a month in the bank since 1972 when her husband died. Her husband was a United States soldier who died in action in Vietnam. There's more to the story than that, but I don't want to go into the depth here. Uh, he was a staff sergeant uh, stationed at uh, Camp Friendship in Karat. I think he was involved with clandestine services, but I haven't been able to, to, to confirm that. And because he died in action, this woman, this Thai woman, uh, was getting about $1,000 a month uh, as a widow's pension. And she never told anybody about it. She had been putting it in the bank, and here she is now in 20... 22, feeling vulnerable, I guess, because the whole COVID thing had us all, all us old folks worrying about, you know, are we going to be the next ones to croak or something like that? But at any rate, she announced it to the family and they were all quite excited about it. And, you know, when I heard the story, I was well, oh, great. I'm glad you had that windfall, you know, and, you know, good for you and your family. I hope it does a lot of good for you. What got my attention is your grandfather was an American soldier killed in Vietnam. I'm a baby boomer. I grew up during that era. I also had nine years in the military. I'm not a war veteran, but I, you know, I, my software, my emotional software was installed in that era. And, you know, learning that these children who are looking to me as a father or a grandfather, you know, that their paternal grandfather was an American war hero. So I wanted to learn more about that. Now, the old lady, her, you know, the widow didn't really want to talk to me. She kept saying she wouldn't and she'd break the appointments. 
The other, you know, one of the other options was Bukow's ex-husband and that, you know, she doesn't really talk to him very much. And, you know, that was not a very attractive thing to do. Well, I learned that the ex-husband had a, another brother who was a monk for the last 30 years. And I asked, Boo, you want to go see the monk? I said, sure. I really like that. She says, he's very handsome, was her reply. And so we went to this beautiful lot on the outskirts of Bang Bangkok and, and met this man who uh, has been living, you know, the monastic life of a monk. And, you know, he told me all about his father. He confirmed to me the story about uh, Joseph T. Baker. That's the name of the American war hero who was killed in Vietnam. And in that hour-long conversation that I had with this monk, something just kind of magical happened. By the end of the conversation, I told the monk, don't worry, I'm going to take care of your nieces and nephews. And I made a full commitment to these children. And what's occurred since then has been nothing short of magical in my life. I don't know if it makes a really long video, so if I started telling you all the good things that came out of that commitment, it would turn into an hour-long video. So just take my word for it. My life has, has uh, deepened significantly. The good stuff in my life has deepened significantly since that commitment. And that's a pretty magical story, all about making a commitment. Give it a try. <laughs> Until one is committed, there is always hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising to one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidences and meetings and material assistance, which no one could have dreamed would come his way. Whatever you can do or dream, you can begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. A good, strong commitment will create things way beyond what you think might be available to you. I'm living proof of that. <laughs> See you the next time. Say goodbye. Goodbye.